Retrospection Radio Theater presents... Come in and join us for a tale. Welcome, I'm the narrator. Today, we meet a brilliant hunter. And he's not just any hunter. This hunter doesn't lay traps for rabbits or game. No, this hunter specifically looks for monsters. We will learn the story of this town through a series of letters and diary entries from various townspeople. Retrospection Radio Theater presents The Colmesbury Plague. Alfred Morris, April 21st, present year. Today I came to my tavern and opened up like any other day. However, something odd happened that made it unlike any other day. Towards the end of the night, a stranger walked into the bar. I knew not where he came from, only that he clearly wasn't from around here. He sat alone, ordered a singular drink, but stayed longer than any man with one drink ever should. I think I'd like to not see him around here no more. April 22nd, present year. I'm not sure what happened to that stranger from yesterday, and I'm not sure I'd like to know. I asked about his whereabouts with the town crier Giles Godfrey, but he'd not seen nor heard of the man. Giles is the type of man who sees everyone and everything that enters his town, along with me. First body enters Combsbury through the town square, then they march right to the tavern. April 23rd, present year. My wife Beretta's sick. I'm not sure what's happening to her, but her skin is turning red. I called in the doc, but he couldn't figure out a single thing. April 30th, present year. The infection is growing. We may have to amputate the arm. I'm sorry, my dear, but if you survive, it'll be worth it. Dear Mr. Alfred Morris, I'm sorry to send this letter to you at your place of work, as I know your wife is beginning to suspect, but I have dire news that you must hear. We must meet in our usual spot. May 1st, 3 p.m., your lunch hour. Love, Brian Chadwick. Dear Miss Chadwick, Please never send a letter to me asking for us to meet. Instead, meet me when nobody is around. I wish to never have a paper trail, because it's harder for her to follow us. I'll be there. Alfred Morse. Jazz Godfrey, May 22nd, present year. After a long day of crying, I thought I might get a drink. Well, my good friend Alfred Morris pounded me with questions when I entered his tavern tonight. Turns out there was some mysterious cloaked fella wandering around. I have yet to talk to the man, but I told him that I would let him know if I ever spoke to the fellow. May 3rd, present year. There's talk around town that Bretta's surgery didn't work. They took off the infected arm, but the infection spread to the other. I think I'll make a house call to them tomorrow. Bretta Morris, May 3rd, present year. I believe in two things in life. The rich will manipulate the poor, and any good soul will die before their time. I fear I am both. The infection is getting worse and worse, so I must write this final diary entry to my husband, Alfred Morris. Alfred, you were my love, my one true light throughout all the darkness of my past, the rain washing away the muck and the filth from my body. Without you, I cannot live. Without me, you can. Though I have loved you, I know you haven't always been faithful. And I tell you now, I hate you. I hate you for everything you've done to me, to our family, to our child. I shall come before God and he will reflect on my life and let me through the gates into heaven. Good souls will die before their time. And seeing as you are still alive, well... Take care of your mistress for me. Your wife, Beretta. Brianne 
Brianne Chadwick, May 10th. I came across a stranger at Beretta Morris' funeral today. He was a queer sort of fellow, and I'm not entirely sure of his intentions. I was with Alfred Morris, mourning the loss of his wife, when he suddenly got mad at me and started screaming. I'm not sure what he said, but I tried to calm him. He hit me, so I left. On my way home, I noticed a man, dressed in hunting clothes, walking in an alley behind me. I turned to face him, and we stared at each other for a moment. His eyes were light blue, staring into mine, as if he were reading me. Then he simply turned and walked away. Not sure who this man is, but I think I like him. Jazz Godfrey, May 10th, present year. We got Alfred drunk just to sober him up. He was in a fit of rage and tears, tearing everything down around him, hitting Jonathan Boyle and knocking him into the table. So we held him down and sobered him up. Brian Chadwick, May 15th, present year. I heard from Giles, who heard from Alfred, that the doc now has a blue spot on his leg. I wonder what's going around. I think I might keep my distance from Alfred for a while, just in case whatever his wife had was contagious. Father Nicholas, May 17th, present year. Brienne Chadwick is a witch. I've seen her with everyone who's gotten sick. She's the one spreading the sickness. Mary Morse, May 20th, present year. Doc is getting worse. I'm afraid Father may come down with what Mother had. I'm not sure what to do anymore. I can't lose my father and my mother. I'm still so young, I haven't married yet. I have so much left to do with my life. I need father with me to help me every step of the way. I'm not ready to live alone. May 25th, present year. Doc died today. He was the only doctor in town. Let's hope the infection died with him and doesn't move on to father. Nobody attended his funeral, according to Jonathan Boyle. They just burned his body and everyone attended business like usual. Is this the way life is going to be from now on? Dying, then people just carrying on like nothing happened? Father hasn't been doing anything. He's just been drinking himself away, crying his heart out. I pray that he recovers. I need him. Brianne Chadwick, May 25th, present day. Doc died today. I didn't go to his funeral. I really don't want to catch what he and Beretta had. Instead, I spent the day wandering the streets, thinking about how a body could grow up with two people. Then they could just be gone. Just like that. I don't get it. Anyways, I ran into that handsome and mysterious man today, who was watching the tavern from an opening in an alleyway. So I walked up to him and asked him what his name was. He turned to me and stared at me like I was crazy. Then he said, Achilles Haywood, monster hunter at your service. Monster hunter? Does our quiet little town of Combsbury have a monster running amok? Father Nicholas, May 26th, present day. I gathered the townspeople today and spoke to them. God is looking down on us, killing us, and cursing us. And it was all because of the harlot Brienne Chadwick. He hates her for what she's done to the men in this town. The lust, the need, the longing. She's a succubus. The town joined me and we collected Miss Chadwick, bringing her to the town square to be brought before the flames. She shall be sent back to where she came from. Jazz Godfrey, May 26, present day. We got Miss Chadwick and we're going to burn her for being a witch. She screamed screamed and screamed, begging us, begging us not to throw her in. Father Nicholas claimed that she was trying to turn us from God, trying to deny the men of the town the gates to heaven. I don't think I'll be able to sleep tonight. I don't think anyone will. We were all so swept up in it, then I saw her face. We all saw it, her body melting away in the fire. Father says what we did was right, that God will welcome us into heaven for it. I can't help but feel that he won't.
Alfred Morris, May 31st, present day. I've been having trouble sleeping lately. I've been having nightmares of Beretta coming back, like she's just alive again. But this time, the gleam in her eyes is gone. Then she goes around spreading the plague, killing everyone in the town. Then I wake up and see a small imp-like creature staring down at me. I scream and smack at it, and it scampers away. Then I light a candle, search for it, and fall back asleep. Perhaps it's all a dream, because then I have no more nightmares the rest of the night. June 2nd, present day. The mysterious wanderer walked into the tavern again tonight. I walked up to him and asked him his name. He responded, Achilles Haywood, monster hunter at your service. That gave me an idea. I asked Mr. Haywood if he would mind stopping by. I had a feeling that it may not just be a nightmare. Perhaps it was real. He agreed and said he would stop by in two days. Mary Morris, June 4th, present day. Father developed a blue spot on his skin on the 3rd. I fear the worst will happen. Mother died in 10 days. Doc died in 10 days. Then they burned Brienne. I fear Father doesn't have much longer. June 4th, later that day. A man stopped by tonight. He entered Father's room, and they stayed together all night. June 5th, present day. I heard noises in father's room last night. A horrible, a horrible scream. The sound of a blade unsheathing. Then a thud. Alfred Morris, June 5th, present day. Mr. Haywood said that the creature was a backheart. A monster that puts nightmares in your head and feeds off your fears. I thanked him with gold. Then I asked if he would stay in town. He told me he would, indeed, stay longer in town. He had unfinished business, apparently. I don't know. I'm just happy the creature's dead. Now this blue spot can finally go away and I can return to living my life. Lily Chadwick, June 11th, present day. I don't know what to do in the world. Mother hid me. She never returned. Jazz Gadfrey, June 13th, present day. Alfred passed away today. The whole town turned out to his funeral. Not for Alfred, no. But for his daughter, Mary. She's all alone in the world now. She's going to live with her aunt out in Grimsfield. I pray this girl has no more tragedy in her life. I don't think she can take much more. Lily Chadwick, June 13th, present day. I escaped today. I left. Mother hasn't come back in so long, so I fear the worst. I ran into a girl who was leaving today. She said her name was, uh, Mary. She asked me where I was going. I said I didn't know. So, she said I can come with her. Now we're going to her aunt's house in Grimsfield. Henrietta Larson, July 3rd, present day. I came to town today looking to sell medicines. This town is dead. There were corpses everywhere. There were a few people walking around, but when they saw me, they screamed at me to get out and then ran back into their homes. I wonder what happened here. Perhaps I should leave? July 4th, present day. As I wandered around through town, I came to the realization that I would get no business from Combsbury. I found a diary on the side of the road while leaving town. It was addressed, Diary of Achilles Haywood, April 13th. I don't believe in happy endings. You can't in my line of work. It's a shame. I wish everything could be a fairy tale. That everyone could live happily ever after. But it just can't happen that way. Sometimes you can't save everyone. I had to leave Grimsfield. I rode out on Tuesday, April 20th. I came to the town of Combsbury today. I was hired by one Beretta Morris... Apparently she's been having trouble sleeping, and when she awakes, she sees some sort of monster on her chest. This sounds like a Buckart case. Simple to deal with. I should be out of this town quickly. I think I'll stop by the tavern tomorrow, see if I can overhear anything about this town. April 22nd, present year. 
I heard yesterday that Mary Morris lives in a house near the edge of town, with her father, Alfred, and her mother, Beretta. I will go and check this out. April 24th, present year. It is indeed true I have found all the Morrises. I must stake out the house, see if I can see the creature coming and going. April 28th, present year. I have not seen the creature coming or going from the house. Something is awry. I must go investigate the people of town. April 29th, present year. The town crier Giles Godfrey is an energetic, joyous nitwit. Constantly trips over the ground or his own feet. He attempted to walk up to a woman, but ended up tripping and falling on her husband and knocking him over. This man is either a monster who's so very well disguised that it's shocking, or a human whose best friend clearly isn't balance. April 30th, present day. Alfred Morris simply stays in his home or his tavern all day. He's good at his job, but rough with the customers. He's a brute of a man and is callous, but some of his buddies enjoy that. No suspicious activity. April 31st, present year. Jonathan Boyle is a normal person also, just a big brute like his friend Alfred Morris. The only thing out of the ordinary is this man didn't go to church on Sunday and instead went to meet Brianne Chadwick. I should investigate her. May 1st, present year. I saw Brianne Chadwick and Alfred Morris leaving an abandoned building today. Interesting. I imagine some sort of affair is going on. I wonder, does he know she's also been seeing his best friend? May 10th, present year. Brett had died today. I thought it was the perfect day to watch Brianna Chadwick, see what her actions are toward Alfred Morris. Well, he began shouting at her until she left. I decided to confront her in the alleyway to see what she would do. I'm more than curious about that woman. She has a connection with everyone, and she seems to have more than her looks going for her. May 25th, present year. I saw Brianne Chadwick leaving a hole in the ground. I went to check it out after she left to discover a little girl asleep, perhaps a daughter. I'm curious how she provides for her. Who is the father? Does anyone know about this girl? May 26th, present year. I ran into Brianne Chadwick yesterday after I discovered the girl. I'm still not sure what to think of her. May 27th, present year. If Brianne Chadwick was a monster, then we've no reason to fear her now. She was burned at the stake yesterday by Father Nicholas. I did not interfere. It is not my business what this town does or doesn't do to its people. I'm merely here to find and kill a monster. June 2nd, present year. I've been getting nowhere with my monster hunt. I've decided to try the tavern again and see if I can find anything. While I was there, I ran into Alfred Morris, who asked me to come home with him, as he's been having trouble sleeping. He said he would pay. I'm aware his wife has already paid me, but Alfred will pay me again for the same job. Well, a man's got to make money. I shall come over in two days. June 5th, present year. Disposed of the monster. Contract completed. However, I noticed a blue spot on Alfred's arm. This could be the sign of a Genganger, a wraith so hateful in life that they've come back in death to spread sickness and kill the living that have tormented them. When they finish with their task, they grow in power and begin to spread sickness everywhere. Perhaps they shall stay in town. June 13th, present year. I went to check on the girl, but she was gone from her hiding hole. I wonder, was she the monster? June 15th, present year. Giles Godfrey, Jonathan Boyle, and Father Nicholas have all come down with fevers. The Genganger must have completed its task. Now it's spreading plague in the city. Luckily, now I can try and figure out who it is. June 16th, present year. I stayed awake last night thinking. Alfred Morris is dead. Beretta is dead. The Doc is dead. All of these people were connected in some way. I must re-examine their corpses this evening with the town asleep. June 17th, present year. I dug up Alfred's and Doc's corpses, but Beretta's was missing. This must mean that Beretta is the Genganger. I must know if she will kill any more, or if she will be at rest soon. I shall search through her belongings. June 19th, present year. Half of the town's population is sick. I have found Beretta's diary. Most of the entries are nonsense. I shall continue looking. June 21st, present year. It appears that she knew about Alfred and Brianne and despised them both. She apparently also knew about Brianne and most of the other men in town. Her hate must have been so strong that she developed the sinner's judgment marks over her skin. 
red marks that spread and made her weak and sick, and then she'd die and be reborn as a creature capable of killing those in life who hurt her. Jane Gangers look exactly like they did in life. They're just missing a tint to their eyes, showing that they were ever alive. I'll see if I can find her. June 25th, present year. I have disposed of the Jane Ganger, but not before she could touch me with her icy grip. Like three-fourths of this down, I shall soon perish. I write this final entry, letting everyone who stumbles across it know this town has been saved, but at a heavy cost. I have come across Mary Morris's diary entry, and ask one thing, please, dear traveller. Please go to Grimsfield and look for her and the little girl with her. Make sure they are safe. Nobody lives in Grimsfield. Join us next month on the 25th for The Girl From Time. This has been a Retrospection Radio Broadcast. All rights reserved. Featured in the broadcast today were Lizzie Zink, Haley Neiman, Ruth Ann James, Ian Slimmon, Jimmy Slimmon, Noah Martin, Nicole Brown, and Alexander Martin. You can find this podcast on www.retrospectionradio.com. You can listen on iTunes or at Google Play. Follow us on social media, on Facebook at Retrospection Radio, Instagram at Retrospection Radio, or on Twitter at underscore Retro Radio underscore.